Hello, hello everyone, welcome back, Mr. Minority here with another video, we're going for the Master Set 2. Now the Master Set 2, when it first came out, all those years ago, 2007 if I'm remembering correctly, um, you know, I liked it, but there were some reservations I had, like on the number of army cards, you can tell just by looking at it. Substantially less than the first one, and there are, uh, among them, even though there are less, two of them, that are the same as before in terms of remakes, but of course, you know, there's a decent amount different with them, but they're the same character. And you can't have multiples of them in the same army. They are unique heroes, and you can't have either, or, or can you, or can you, I don't know, it's been a while. It's been a while since I've considered uh, drafting both of them at the same time, and again, as I said in my other video, we did massive armies, so, you know, we just kind of did everything goes sort of situation. So. Um, not a whole lot necessarily to mention. The new aesthetic on the borders is kind of nice. Um, yeah. Uh, well, let's go ahead and get started. So first we have Major Q. I probably should have done some uh, uh, <coughs> tuning up on my research before I did this. This is Major Q. I think this is uh, 10. If I remember correctly. <coughs> Major Q9 is in right now this vision. So there's Major Q10. I'm gonna place him up here. Um, oh man, I really like him, and I kind of feel better if we're doing that. He he's really cool. I like his design. Um, a little bit too humanoid. I kind of like the slight departure, like the Death Walker Nine Thousand and the um, Major Q9, where it's a little bit more of a departure with at least some, you know, more bulk to it and heft, and Major Q10, uh, this one right here, whoever his name is looking at, which the army cards are a little larger, um, is a little bit more humanoid than I'd probably ideally like, but it's still very cool looking, love the aesthetic, um, very good in terms of, um, you know, point value, uh, in a 400 points army build, and then um, also very good in the large army build. Um, you got multiple options. Um, you're probably not going to use the machine gun option, more the rocket, wrist rocket, whatever, uh, launcher, rocket launcher thing. Um, but yeah, very solid hero. A little bit lower in the life, but the higher defense kind of helps to mitigate that. And then of course, it's got the good range, good attack. So very solid hero overall. Definitely worth the points. Martin and Grubbs I'm going to be placing in the C tier. Um, they're kind of interesting the way they function, um, but not the most creative or great design. They look like alien dogs, which is not bad. It's okay. You know, you got to have the mediocre designs, you know, to appreciate the more creative ones more fully or the more uh, <clears throat> vibrant uh, ones. But um, they're okay, um, you know, they're okay, point worth, obviously if they're by themselves, they're borderline worthless, but they've got to be paired with uh, Torkolna. And once they're paired with Torkolna, okay, you know, they've got some utility, they've got some utility there. Uh, the Morrow Drudges, I'm gonna put down here, especially if you don't have Swamp Water, um, they are pretty mediocre without Swamp Water. Now, with the addition of the Morrow Hives, the same set, um, you know, um, they have some viability, um, they have some viability, but you're not going to be going for them first, spoiler alert. Um, in terms of design aesthetic, they look kind of like the Morrow, so it's kind of nice, you know, it's always nice to flush out factors and not just necessarily have one or two representatives of them, but have a few more so that you can kind of get a sense, you know, it's kind of like, you know, Earth, right? Earth has tons of history and that's the same thing I like to see with these other worlds, especially larger factions like the Morrow. Where you're gonna have uh, maybe you could have you know past present future with the Mara as well, but um, either regardless of time, you have multiple factions or multiple uh, interpretations, multiple you know sub factions within those factions. So um, they're decent, um, but they rank pretty low in terms of design. But again, I would say the OG Heroescape overall has a pretty good design aesthetic. So. They rank low, but overall I think they're still a pretty good design. The Mar Hive is pretty cool, and I'll place it in the A tier. Um, it's a very cool design. I really like the idea of an immovable figure. 
Um, they did this, I think, pretty well in my opinion. I like the idea of it being able to spawn these common Morrow figures, um, potentially. <clears throat> And it's to date the largest, as a huge 17, largest figure in HeroScape, both in terms of height and in the number of bases. It takes up six hex tiles, six spaces. Um, I like the design aesthetic again. It's pretty interesting. It's non traditional, but in the same way, it fits in with what's been going on with the aesthetic and uh, the kind of thematic presentation of the, you know, kind of like the ants skeleton like swarms of the morrow so the next of the mars things i can put them in solid b2 these guys are pretty good and these guys are the depending on which other morrow com you have but if you just get this set these are the guys you're going to be respawning or attempting to respawn with the morrow hive these guys are dangerous kind of like the zedian guards i mentioned in the first master set these guys will pull their weights uh, from my experience time and time again um obviously if they get a bad roll and that's you know pretty disastrous but so long as they get you know a decent roll they hurt okay they're not that powerful you can kind of chew them up for dinner or lunch but again more hyper just spawn them right back and they got, although they're low on range, very low on range for a ranged uh, attacker, they can get close enough and they will hurt. Okay, they will, as the uh, title stinger is, they, they will provide that uh, powerful sting. And they'll take down uh, more than their weight. They punch above their weight, this armory card does. And in terms of design aesthetic, pretty good. I would say it's pretty similar to the Drudge, a little bit better maybe. Um, but it's pretty similar because you kind of got the you know, skeleton look. Raylan, I like this one uh, quite a bit. I'm going to put her in A tier. In terms of um, her meta viability, you know, she's nowhere near the original Raylan because the original Raylan was quite frankly OP. But this one's a lot more balanced. You have, you know, the squad control or crowd control with the special attack. Um, then you have the aura still, but the aura is a much more balanced. So you can stay farther back with the six clear sights uh, base range. And then it only gives one, that's the negative, it only gives plus one. But then of course, you're bolstered to 120, you know, one and a half times the point value. So with her, it's more like, okay, should I take this hero shrine? Not as opposed to the other Raylands. Like if she's allowed, not banned, then you're gonna grab her up. Easy 80 point decision. This one, 120, could be better spent as well potentially, but it's still a good, uh, it's good, Bang for your buck. Okay, so I'm Drake Alexander. I'm gonna put him up here, probably a little ahead of the Raylan. Um, I like her design a little better than his, um, though I still like his, um, especially comparable to the first Master Set. Again, these are the two right here that were in Master Set 1, but then had their, uh, themselves redone and buffed. They were uh, drinking that wellspring water. Um, <clears throat> so Drake Alexander in this iteration, it's basically like the first one, but on steroids again. Um, he has one more life, which with the Thorian speed really kind of helped. And then he has one more defense, which with the Thorian speed and coupled with the uh, plus one life really helps. So he's bulky, okay? Stats on paper, bulky, um, but then taking the Thorian speed to account, he's not easy to take down, right? And then of course he has the same uh, smackaroo times six attack die, which is gonna give a wall up. And then uh, this time with his arm, he has like a grapple hook, so he can move across, um, you know, a few spaces as opposed to having to just move one space uh, up a certain level. And then now he has also a little pistol, which the pistol is not all that great, but at least adds a little bit of range to him, whereas otherwise he would have to close in the distance. Um, just be aware you can only attack you can attack everyone but Jandar figures. We did have a mistake one battle several years ago where someone, <laughs> he killed someone who was on Jandar's side. I was like, no, we can't do that even though you're on the opposite side, so. Shahori, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a huge fan of the design. I like ninjas um, overall, um, but by this point in time, and you'll find out as we get into the uh, smaller waves, there were a lot of ninjas coming out. And, you know, I, I don't mind having, um, you know, some here and there, um, you know, as I mentioned before, flushing it out. But I really feel that a lot of the, uh, some of the ninjas in Shahori, if I'm pronouncing her name correctly, in particular, don't really distinguish themselves in their, um, you know, role on the battlefield. 
and she's kind of one of them. She's good for her point value. Yeah, she's not worth the main points, and she'll get in, you know, probably a good weight carrier to carry those points, but I'm not, not a huge fan of the design. It's okay, you know, it's not bad again. It is pretty decent, but again, it's just difficult to find what slot she goes into in terms of being really unique when bumped up against the other ninjas. Um, but, you know, decent, like for instance, I like Kamiko a, a, a lot more in terms of a special design aesthetic, but Shori is decent um, and uh, earns her spot in a solid B tier. Sonlin, okay, Sonlin. I really, I, I feel, I, I don't know, uh, why not, why not? So Hero Escape would be proud. I really like Sonlin, I, I love the design this deck. I like that he has a dragon on his shoulder, that's so freaking cool. Age of Annihilation, don't get me started. Whew, that was an awesome design. But Sonlin's one of those that he, if he just had one more defense, man, he'd be really, really good. But he is um, a very solid hero overall. Obviously his 160 points more or less communicates that, but he just has a lot of versatility and damaging, and then, but then also being able to heal. Um, along with the range and the solid attack and the solid defense, so he can you know sit back. He can also um, you know go a little bit more forward in the mid range. So uh, he he has a good amount of versatility, and obviously his life doesn't really support that as much versatility. Uh, sorry, his life is a uh, movement, um, but um, a great design because there by this time I think by this time or around this time is like the exact same time there were a lot of elves that came out all at once. And um, they all kind of distinguished themselves a little bit here and there. Some of them kind of got lost in the mix. This design did not with the dragon on his shoulder. That very much distinguished him from the other elves. So again, kind of, you know, having, you know, a faction flushed out, but having creativity really, to me, is rewarding. I, I really like Solomon. I really like his design. I think he is a staple of uh, kind of like, almost like the face of Hero Save, kind of like Sergeant Drake Alexander and the Raylan. And last but not least, certainly, certainly not least, we got Tokul now. I'm going to put this bad boy up here. I don't know if really if I should put him first or second. He, I'll put him first. I'll put him first. He, he's the face of uh, Master Set 2. You can't see it because I don't have it um, in this location. Um, but I really like his design. Uh, again, you have, if you just looked at the Mara on the back, okay, you know. <laughs> You have a regular, but he's riding another Morrow. Okay, we haven't seen that. It's almost like a, a, a grut riding a, another giant grut or something like that. This this was unique and um, uh, very cool looking design. Uh, I really like the aesthetic. I like his abilities. Very very solid hero. Um, I don't quite know if he's worth a two twenty because two twenty, if I remember correctly, at this point um, that he's worth two twenty is massive. That's literally a little over half. An entire army's worth in terms of the 400 point draft system so it's questionable but you're gonna see he's he's worth around the 200s if nothing else again depending on um you know um what the board is like and what your enemy's army composition is like but his trample stomp really can make quick work of a lot of squads and then of course he has the solid um, massive walloping uh, six attack, really solid five defense coupled with that six life, he's not going to fall quickly. So he's really good. And this is one example, again, kind of like I said with Grimnak. I don't know why Grimnak only had two attackers. Oh, it's the orc on top attacking. Well, it was Torko no, it's like the guy on top attacking a six attack. No, you can't tell me that. That's probably those huge hands of this Torko no that has six attack. No, that guy on top probably has two or three attack at most. So. Anyway, that's a bit of a, a tangent. So, there it is. Master Set 2, Swarm of the Morrow. It's a pretty good set. I definitely um, have let it grow over me over the years. Uh, I still think Rise of the Valkyrie, the first Master Set, is overall better. It uh, has a lot more uh, uh, breadth. Uh, this one maybe has a little bit more depth, especially uh, in the Morrow, uh, in regards to the Morrow um, division. But... Still a very good set, and I appreciate it for what it is. Um, it didn't have as much terrain either, either um, as the first one, and is varied and swamp. You, you don't really encounter swamp outside this master set. In fact, let me go ahead and say I don't think there is any other <laughs> um, reference to swamp, um, swamp tiles, etc. Outside of this master set, not even any expansions that follow, small expansions that followed out of it. So a little bit too self-contained um, for my liking. 
but a great master set. I definitely would recommend getting a second after the first one uh, for multiple reasons, but if nothing else for uh, well, aesthetics and things of that nature. But if you love Morrow, here you go. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Continuing on the HeroScape run, probably gonna do uh, wave one next, the small wave. Uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is a bit of a different thing and take care and I will see you guys later.